listen everybody to the words I have to say Better get ready this is Daniel White the third with the second coming watch update this is update number 596 let's take a quick look at today's prophecy related headlines which point towards the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it First, today, under the sign category of wars and rumors of wars, according to the Associated Press, U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter convened an extraordinary war council on Monday on Iraq's doorstep six days after taking office to discuss the nitty-gritty of the administration's oft-criticized strategy for countering the Islamic State militant group and probe for gaps and weaknesses. The Army General commanding the war effort in Iraq and Syria to, told reporters that the Islamic State's fighters are halted and on the defensive in Iraq and facing a new counterattack by Iraqi forces in Anbar province to retake a town the militants seized earlier this month. Carter said he assembled an array of U.S. generals, diplomats, and intelligence officials not just to hear the latest on the battlefield progress but also to better understand the intellectual underpinnings of the anti-ISIS strategy. Second, today, under the sign category of wars and rumors of wars, according to the Associated Press, Egypt's president said on Sunday that the need for a joint Arab military force is growing every day as the region faces the threat of Islamic militancy. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi said in an address to the nation that Egypt's military has no interest in invading or attacking other nations, but will defend Egypt as well as the region if required and in coordination with our Arab brothers. The Egyptian leader said both Jordan and the United Arab Emirates have offered to dispatch military forces to aid Egypt following last week's beheading of 21 Egyptian Coptic Christians by Islamic State militants in Libya. And this just in, please pray for our Syrian Christian brothers in Syria. Right now, it is being reported worldwide that ISIS has abducted nearly a hundred Christians in Syria. That report is just in at the time of this recording, and I will deal with that more in our next report. Third, today, under the sign category of distress among nations, according to Religion News Service, the Italian government is on high alert, as well as the Vatican, after threats from the Islamic State, ISIS, called Italy the nation signed with the blood of the cross. Italy is one of a handful of major Western countries that has not been victim of a large-scale terror assault since the September 11 attacks. The Vatican, considered by many to be the de facto seat of worldwide Christianity, is in Rome, so the city could be a target. Italian officials fear extremists could enter the country amid the growing tide of refugees 
arriving by boat from North Africa. About 500 extra troops have been stationed to guard symbolic targets in Rome and monitor the streets of the capital for suspicious activity. Fourth, today under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East, according to the Associated Press, the Palestinian president has threatened to stop security coordination with Israel if the country continues to withhold millions of dollars of Palestinian tax revenue. President Mahmoud Abbas has warned European leaders that Palestinian officials would discuss the matter uh, during a Palestinian Central Council meeting next week. Israel has withheld tax revenue from the Palestinians since they joined the International Criminal Court last month. The Palestinian Authority said the withheld revenue amounts to $140 million per month for the last two months. Fifth today under the sign category of distress among nations, according to the Guardian of Great Britain, Russia has reportedly offered to sell Iran powerful and advanced uh, anti-aircraft missiles in a deal that could have an impact on nuclear talks approaching a deadline next month. The head of the Russian state arms conglomerate Rostec was quoted as saying that the firm was willing to supply Tehran with missiles capable of intercepting and destroying ballistic and cruise missiles as well as aircraft. Tehran is said to be considering the offer. If the sale goes ahead, the missiles are likely to represent a significant defense against any future airstrikes aimed at Iran's nuclear facilities and so could, in theory, diminish pressure on Iran to come to an agreement in nuclear negotiations. Beloved, you can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. The prophetic passage of Scripture from the Word of God we are uh, looking at today is Numbers chapter 22, verses 4 through 6, which reads, Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers uh, therefore unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, uh, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. Dear friends, allow me to share with you some thoughts and points on this passage from the popular Bible prophecy commentary edited by Dr. Tim LaHaye and Dr. Ed Heinsen. If you don't have a copy of this book, get it today for your library. You need it. Balaam is not a Jewish prophet, but a syncretistic Gentile seer or soothsayer from the region of Mesopotamia. Balak, the king of Moab, commissioned Balaam to supernaturally curse Israel. So renowned was Balaam's reputation as an effective diviner that according to Numbers 22.6, it was believed that whomever he blessed would indeed be blessed, and whomever he cursed would likewise be cursed, in a twisted echo of the Abrahamic covenant's promise that whoever blessed or cursed Abraham's progeny would be reciprocally blessed or cursed. Apparently more than a little nervous at the prospect of Israel's arrival at his nation's border. Balak designs an offensive the strategy built upon his expectation of Balaam's powerful sorcery and magic. 
prior to Balaam's journey to Moab. The soothsayer has three consultations with the Lord. In the ancient world, it was believed that the particular gods worshipped by specific nations wielded the greatest power over those nations. So, uh, naturally, Balaam consulted Israel's God, probably one of many deities to whom Balaam gave homage. In these encounters, Balaam is repeatedly told to speak only the word of the Lord and specifically not to curse Israel, whom God has blessed. In fact, once Balaam arrives in Moab, not one of his efforts to curse Israel will come to fruition. Rather, they will result in the blessing of God's chosen people. The first three of Balaam's four prophetic oracles to Balak are each preceded with the setting up of seven altars and the sacrifice of one bull and one ram on each altar. The discovery in the 1930s of thousands of cuneiform Mari tablets uh, dated from about 1700 BC revealed the existence of a school of Mesopotamian seers whose recorded divination activities strongly resemble Balaam's practices as described in this narrative. The initial oracle expresses two reasons Balaam is unable to fulfill his commissioned mandate to curse Israel. First, as God's covenant nation, Israel was to be different, distinct, and separated from all other nations. Second, Israel was blessed by God. The nation's numerical strength at this time confirms God's covenantal promise to Abraham of incalculable numbers of descendants. The oracle concludes with Balaam's expressed wish that his final destiny would be like Israel's. Understandably, Balaam's blessing does not sit well with his patron, Balak. Ladies and gentlemen, if the Lord tarries his coming and we live, we will continue looking at the prophetic passages of the Bible in our next broadcast slash podcast. Our second coming quote for today is from R. W. DeHaan. He said, The fact that our Savior is coming again gives us hope it makes us want to stand our ground. It encourages us to continue fighting the good fight of faith. It assures us of victory. Fierce, rather, as the battle may rage and difficult as the conflict may be, as we serve him, we dare not give up. Christ is coming again, perhaps today. Dear friend, if you are not ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, may I encourage you lovingly to get ready, get ready, get ready today uh, by trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior, by believing in your heart that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. That is the gospel, that is the good news. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live eternally with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Until next time, my beloved, please keep looking up. For your redemption draweth nigh. And let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator. When he prayed, even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you.